In this lesson, you will learn how to create in situ concrete walls. So go ahead and open up project A, and we're going to begin by taking a look at the core area. Remember that our DWG file was loaded in and displayed in the site plan, so do ensure that you have the site plan open. Okay, let's start by zooming in on the core area. And if we just study this core area, you can see here that we have some main concrete walls going around the perimeter of the core. In our previous session, we created a new wall type, RC wall 350. We're going to utilize that wall style for this particular core. So on the structure ribbon, let's go ahead and select wall. We'll begin by taking a look at the options bar. You can see here that mine is set to height, but if yours is set to depth, do make sure that you've selected height. We're going to take this all the way up to 03 third floor. The location line, what I'm planning to do here is trace around the outside face of these walls. So I'm going to set the location line here for finish face exterior. I want to make sure that chain is on because I'm drawing more than one wall. And of course here, the join status is allow. So would of my walls join together? Remember that when you create your walls, you need to be drawing those walls in a clockwise fashion. So I'm going to begin in the bottom left hand corner and just start to trace these walls. You'll notice that I'm snapping to the DWG file. Okay, so there's the first finished loop of walls. So here we also have another concrete wall that we need to construct in. So again here, I can just add that to these existing walls here and you'll see that everything merges and becomes monolithic. Let's now create the walls for our lift cores. So we'll go back to the wall command, and this time I'm going to remove chain. And you'll see why I'm doing this. Now, when I sketch this wall in, you can see then that Revit stops drawing and, of course, then joins all of those wall types together. And another thing we could have done is we could have selected the wall centers. So if I go ahead here and select wall center for my location line, even though we're tracing around a DWG file, you'll see that Revit can actually then bisect those lines and find the center line, which will be the wall center line. So again, that can be very, very useful. Yep, so we'll now go ahead and sketch in our walls. Okay, so the core area is now complete. We've also got some other walls around the perimeter of the structure. So here, I'm going to go back to the wall command again. And these walls on this section go all the way up to, again to the third floor. This time, on the Draw Tool panel, I'm going to utilise Pick Lines. For the Location Line, I'm going to set Finish Face Exterior. And you can now see here that if, instead of actually tracing around the walls, I can simply just pick the line. You have to make sure that the dotted blue line is on the right side of the wall as we pick these. And of course, this is another alternative to actually physically sketching and tracing and snapping over the DWG file. OK, so those walls are now all in place. We've just got some more walls in here. This particular structure will actually stop on the first floor. So these walls are just going to go up to the height of first floor. So again, on the options bar, we can set height to first. Again here, I'll just continue to use the pick lines method just to pick these walls off. Okay, just again making sure that those walls are on the right side. Um, just to demonstrate what would happen if I didn't get that on the right side, like this, of course, we have the change wall orientation flip handle, and we could just pick that. So again, you can actually repair these things afterwards if need be. Okay, so there are our concrete walls complete for this first part of the project. Let's go ahead and save your project.